know, I know. I finally did it. Yup, a Sony Trinitron RGB mod. First things first, download that service manual. And second things second, like, who's Tanya? And why is she called Electro? I figure I'd take video of the wire harness routing just in case you forget how to put the wires back. Remember to always take caution. By the way, an anti-static brush really only works when paired with a wrist trap. So here's the Micon labeled IC001. And not far from it is the Chroma or Jungle Chip labeled IC301. So page 29 of the service manual is the schematics for the A board or the main board. So here's the chroma chip again. And this notch on ICs is used for orientation. On closer look, the RGB and blanking lines are clearly labeled. They are pins 32, 31, 30, and 29 respectively. The game plan is always to create a break in the RGB and blanking circuits. A break is needed so you can insert your own RGB and blanking signals from your console. There are two ways to do this. One is you can cut the copper trace. Or two, you can remove components.
Most service manuals have the CAD drawing of the actual board, so you can make a game plan even before you get the TV. Now let's find the chroma chip. This is confirmation we're looking at the chroma chip. Look for pin number markings. Look for pins 29 to 32. This is a comparison between the schematics and the CAD drawing. You can see here how the CAD drawing is an accurate representation of the board. Now a view from the top side of the board. Now we can see the resistor that leads to the blanking pin. Now locate the chroma chip. I've decided to remove the capacitors and resistor that leads right up to the chroma chip pin. It's easier to solder in the RGB wires here instead of the pads and it provides better strain relief. Now let's zone in on a set 5 volt line. Test point 602 is a great place to solder in your 5 volt wire. Use liquid or paste flux to make your soldering much easier. Apply heat for no more than 3 seconds and make sure the solder joint is smooth and shiny.
also decided to solder in the RGB wires directly to the chroma chips pins. It's simpler and provides better strain relief. Oh, and use an old toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol to clean off the flux. here that I used holes on the board to rot the wires from the bottom of the board to the top side of the board. Normally you can rot it through the side but the board sits on rails that prevents that. And there is no one big hole so you're gonna have to use these individual small holes. I use hot glue to provide even more strain relief and to stand them over the resistors. Use Kapton tape under the hot glue to make removal easier just in case you make a mistake. I didn't want the wires to cover the resistors as they dissipate heat. So here's the individual groups of wires rotted through the side so you can connect them to a breadboard.
I didn't test the mic on wires, but you can if you want to. These are called step drill bits. Get one. So we have a total of 0.258 milliamps on the blacking circuit, which is great. Here's confirmation of the 75 ohm terminating resistor on the composite input, so you don't have to use one for sync.